One other note, and kind of a sad note, and it's interesting we bring this up. You know, Don Coriel is a finalist for the Hall of Fame. It's still a long shot that he will get into Canton because there's so many other legendary coaches that are on the ballot. But Don Coriel, who won 111 games with the Chargers and did great things at San Diego State when they were small college, is a finalist. Well, one of the guys that was a key assistant coach has passed away. Ernie Zampezi, kind of a unique individual. Play caller, offensive coordinator with Coriel, first with the Aztecs back in the day when the Aztecs had all these quarterbacks, and then in the National Football League as, as one of the architects or the trigger men of the Air Coriel era. Dan Fouts, Kellen Winslow, Charlie Joyner, Wes Chandler, Chuck Muncy, James Brooks. How that team never never got to the Super Bowl. <laughs> it's it's absolutely amazing. But Zampezi <laughs> has passed away at age 86. And mm -hmm. he did it not just in San Diego with Dan Fouts and all the ingredients that Don Coriel put together. And his whole coaching philosophy was mismatches. Mm. Here I come to the line of scrimmage. What the hell are you going to do about defending what I got? <laughs> and and oh, he was a unique individual. But he did the exact same thing in Dallas with Troy Aikman. Mm -hmm. And he did the exact same thing in Los Angeles with the original Rams and Jim Everett made mm. him a 30 touchdown a year thrower. Right. And it just wasn't throwing a ball down the field. Prior to that, he introduced the I formation to college football. Where do you think John McKay and the I formation at USC came from? That guy. Really? Ernie Zampezi. I mean, really? he was a brilliant, brilliant X's and O's guy. Mm -hmm. And Unique personality, laid back, did not want to be a head coach, might be the only guy on the face of the planet that did not want to try to be a head coach. He just he found his way. And and the the guys that have come off Ernie Zampezi and Don Coriel's coaching tree, all offensive whizzes, the Joe Gibbses of the world mm -hmm. and the John Maddens of the world, North Turner, legendary coordinator, creator, mm -hmm. all from the Zampezi tree. So we, we lost a good one at age 86. He did everything he wanted in pro sports, didn't want to be a head coach, was just so gifted. They don't put assistant coaches in the Hall of Fame. This guy would rate consideration if they ever opened a side closet for <laughs> assistant coaches in a league. So we'll see as we, as we go to the Super Bowl in January, that's when the final vote will be made mm -hmm. on the 2023 class, mm -hmm. whether Don Coriel gets in. It's, it's a tough call on Coriel. It'd be a tough call on this guy. He was a great, great. These assistant. guys are innovators. They change the sport. That and now when we have this passing game that is so electric, that's what makes us, you know, fans of the sport because it's mm -hmm. exciting. It's fun to watch. You know, I did a little bit of um, reading up about uh, Ernie Zampezi. Grew up in Santa Barbara. Went and played for the Trojans at, at Southern Cal. And he was just, he's 5'9", 166 pounds, you know, when he was playing at SC. And he set the record for the longest punt in SC history. And it was like 80, what was it, 85 yards against the University of Wisconsin? Maybe he was the first punt god. I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, this guy's had an incredible career. And you see pictures of him on the sideline you know, with Troy Aikman and, you know, Aikman, this is, is this godlike figure and here's little Ernie Zampezi, but he is the brains behind the whole operation. One side note, Dan Fouts told me, I, cause I asked him at the height of the air Coriel era. And I, I should preface this by saying before I came uh, to San Diego and before I came to Phoenix, I worked in Cleveland and I worked on the Cleveland Browns network mm. and we had a really good team. The Browns, Sam Bertigliano, Brian Sipe, the Aztec yeah. was the quarterback, were deep in the playoffs and all that. Mm -hmm. So this this goes back, has to be 1980, maybe, 1981. Opening game of the season, Browns host the Chargers. And everybody in Cleveland was amped. Browns football is huge on the lakefront. Huge. Oh, yeah, the dog pound. Uh, it's like a religion. <laughs> everybody's excited. We got Sipe back and we got all these guys and – we're going back to the AFC championship game. They'd been cursed because they had to play Denver a bunch of times and mm -hmm. couldn't get past Denver. So I'm walking the sidelines. Here comes San Diego. I thought, oh, this is going to be a fun game because the Browns are pretty good. Dan Fouts came out throwing from the first snap. Final score, I think it was 44-14 Chargers. Really? Smoked the Browns. And every time I looked up, 
Winslow was running down the middle, wide open. Every time I looked up, Charlie Joyner was catching a short route pass. Every mm -hmm. time I looked up, that was Wes Chandler, acrobatic over the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't enough, they had Pete Johnson and they had James Brooks. So that's that's my memory of Zampezi, Coriel, Fouts, et cetera. Dan told me, because I said at the heyday, they had a five-year run where they led the league in passing mm -hmm. and an offense, and they were spectacular. So what was it like to be on the inside? And this is before I came here to be the voice of the Chargers. And Dan said, Lee, we would go in there on Monday night for meetings to talk about the game plan. And then we'd come back Tuesday and they would give us the playbook of what we were going to do. And he said, Fouts would just kind of look around that locker room and he said, do you know what we're going to do to these guys next weekend? <laughs> and he did it. I mean, it was phenomenal because yeah. the Chargers couldn't play much defense and that – that's why they never, ever got to the Super Bowl. But Coriel, Zampezi, Fouts, artistry. What a, a great time it was. Now, speaking of football, 